The drink, the drink, the drink, we're clicking to the environment, we're clicking to the environment, we're drinking to the environment. Yes. And we're back. And we're back with another episode with Will Wanky. What's up, man? <laughs> Going on. <laughs> You're like, all right, whatever. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so all right, so we went over the the pros. That we I mean, we did go over the pros and cons of. Uh, is there any cons you think to uh, solar power or not really? Like bit like. It's the up the upfront cost kind of hurts a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Um, and it's uh, it's getting rid of the it's getting rid of the manufacture the the panels at the end of their uh, at the end of their lifespan. It's okay. uh, they're 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 made of basically silica, which is recyclable, but there's some there's some nasty chemicals in there. Um, the busways have a few heavy metals in there, but the, the it's basically just glass and um, and aluminum, and the, the frames do not come off these things easily. I've, I've taken a, a few of them apart. They're once they're once they're laminated together, you're not get you're not splitting them up. It's not like you just take the glass off, take the back sheet off, and then you've got aluminum or you've got a uh, silica cells. It's a uh, oh, so once it's they're, they're once one, it's together, they're one, it's pretty much a one way street. Once it's together, it's it's a one way street. Okay. And, and I don't know what they're doing with them right now, other than putting them back in the ground, which I know is not the greatest thing, but it's. Like I said, you figure out how to figure out how to recycle these things. You're gonna you're gonna be a millionaire. A billion. Well, I am uh, I am putting together a little business plan for recycling, but it was mainly for plastics. But I'll definitely pencil in solar panels, or just go directly figure, to solar panels. Figure, figure out solar panels, Ted. I've got I've got uh, several of them. You can you can play around with and try to figure out how to take them apart. <laughs> Legit going into engineering now, which is not my expertise, but I'll figure it out. All right, cool. All right, but the manu the manufacturing of these things. So there's three different there's three different types of uh, photovoltaic solar. Uh, solar yes, cells. manufacturing time. Manufacturing time. It's just, everybody's eyes just glassed yeah, over. Yeah, they're just like what? Yeah, uh, uh, I don't I don't care, man. As long as it produces electric and gives. Yeah, you right. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, there's three right, so, for, so for everyone, try to like definitely simplify it as much as you can. Open your mind. You're going to learn how solar is made and how it operates today. Let's do this. And my nobody, webcam went Nobody down. really understands. <laughs> Some right. of the people who maybe make it. But uh, there's three different types of uh, solar cells. You've got your monocrystalline, which is basically a, a big block of um, pure silica. You've got your polycrystalline which is just fragments of silica that's melted into a big block. And then you've got your amorphous silicon, which is not crystalline because it's amorphous. Now your, your monocrystalline, you're gonna get your best production out of. And um, all these are kind of made the same way. Uh, they, it's in a big block, they slice it like a loaf of bread, very, very thin slices. And uh, they take 50% of the slices, they put them over here, they take 50% of the slices and put them over here. On the bottom layer of, of uh, cells, there's two cells, two wafers to every solar cell. Okay. So kind of, there's a top and a bottom. The top gets doped. It's called doping. I don't know why. It's called doping. They dope it with um, with a, a, a sulfate. I got it right here somewhere. Hang on. Sorry. Go. No, no, it's all right. It's all right, man. It's all good. Uh, Phosphorus. Take your time. They dope the top side with phosphorus, and they dope the bottom side with boron. And what the top does with really? the sulf, uh, with the sulf, what was it? Phosphorus. Phosphorus. I want to keep wanting to say sulfate. What the phosphorus does, it's got it adds an extra electron to the uh, to the silica. And the bottom, the boron, has negative one electron. So that what that creates is it, it creates an electromagnetic magnetic difference, an electro field between the two between the two cells and there is a space between the cells it looks like one cell but there's a space and okay. that electric field exists for the sole purpose of destroying photons remember those uh, little particles from the sun mm -hmm. so the photon does comes down 
penetrates the first layer into the second layer, gets completely destroyed, knocks that one electron, one extra electron from the top array down into the field. The electromagnetic field pushes the electron out. Where does it go? To the bus. Goes to the bus system. Goes up onto this little piece of metal, shoots down the cell. And that's happening. Nice. That's happening a million times a second. I don't know how many times a second, but it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how many electrons are in one volt amp, but it's a lot. It's got to be. <laughs> and um, right, volt amp. Go look that up. It's a volt. Amp. One watt. One watt, maybe. The measurement of speed and velocity for yeah. electric current. Mm. You're kind of a smart guy, man. I'm kind enjoying this. Keep going. Keep kind going. of buzzed right now. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff's like 6%. <laughs> 7.5 5 on the thing. 7.2. <laughs> oh, you're going higher. I'm going to get another one. We're going to get really into the weeds. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, God damn. This is funny. Everyone, as you can tell, my, my buddy William definitely knows what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, God. I love doing this. This is absolutely amazing. I love podcasting. Especially science. This is, oh, love it. You should invite me on. I know a lot of bullshit about a lot of bullshit. This is what I do. I bullshit with drinks and talk about science like bullshit. So, all I do, I know bullshit. Anyway, you're in the right place. Anyway, <laughs> so, the, so the solar wafers are this close apart. You got the, ele the 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 photon flying through. You got the electron shooting down the thing, and um, and so you got maybe 96 of these wafer cells in a single panel. And each one of these wafer cells is connected to the next one on this bus. So you just have more and more electrons shooting down this thing. And uh, when the sun is doing what it's supposed to do, you're probably pushing 63 volts, 69 volts down this panel. And so you've got, let's backtrack a little bit. You've got a back sheet like this, like this uh, rectangle. The, the, right the frame now. of like our... <laughs> cells lined up across the whole thing right and um and the bus bars are moving across the cells like that so all your electrons are flowing from the bottom of the panel up to the top of the panel now on this side of the panel you've got a little box and this box has two leads running off it a positive okay. and a negative one's going in one's going out then you start hooking panel to panel to panel to panel and then you have a string a string is just a series of photovoltaic modules and then uh, that voltage gets amplified. Um, with the solar edge technology, it uh, gets stacked. Did you get a burrito? What? <laughs> well, I'm good. That's rude, man. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> anyway. I'm trying to be really quiet about it. So you get multiple you get multiple strings into the inverter. The inverter takes the DC current, and the DC voltage and current is um, if you know anything about sine waves, DC is a solid sine wave, straight. If you looked at it at a helioscope, it would be flat. Wait, you said sine wave, as in a sine, sine or a sound, as in I hear. It's a sine wave, but it's measured like a sound wave. It looks like a sound wave if you look at it on the right tool. Can you so, spell that really quick? S-I-G-N. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Maybe I'm a little bit close too. So DC sine wave goes straight across. Okay. There's a positive and a negative. Straight across. AC wow. is like oh, a wave. All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 60 hertz is 60 times up and down per second. Oh, so, that makes sense. So the inverter, what it basically does is it takes this straight sine wave through a series of anodes and diodes and slowly creates an artificial AC sine wave. It's a little choppier than a true generator wave. Okay. But it, the inverter is smart enough to match the frequency, the voltage, and the sine wave. Well, the sine wave is the frequency. The frequency and the voltage 
exactly to the grid, whatever the grid is when that inverter is hooked up to it. It's like 120 volts. Well, regular, normal uh, residential grids are 120, 240 volts, single phase. Commercial grids, com commercial grids can be 208 or 480, three phase. And okay. um, so just a more efficient way to use your, use your power because you have bigger motors and commercial stuff. But anyway, um, so the inverter creates an artificial sine wave, matches it to the utility. Use, your house uses whatever solar you produce first. If your house can't use the solar that's being produced, it gets pushed out your electric meter, runs your meter backwards. So you're literally selling power back to the utility company as a credit that you can use when the sun's not running or running when the sun's not up. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that may, wait, so like, so, <laughs> so then like, let me get this straight. So when the sun is up and you're generating power, you're generating That's, more, generally you're generating more than you're gonna use. So it goes out into the grid, you, your neighbors use it, it goes everywhere. Electricity flows where it's needed. So if you don't need it, it's gonna go out into the street and be used somewhere else, but it's gonna run through your meter and make it run backwards. Okay. And but then, that, that could also that, turn and actually like kind of pay you back in a weird way, right? The utility doesn't pay out anymore. And when they do, oh, it sucks. when they do, it's pennies on the dollar. At the end of the year, they zero out your bill. Any extra you have, they give you like maybe six cents per kilowatt hour that you overproduced. But you're buying energy at like 16 or 17 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's kind of a joke. But they own the grid, so you know, it is what it is. You're getting paid anyway. <sighs> if you want to save all your electric, you got to get a battery. But those things are expensive. That's another... That's another that's another, that's another like, <laughs> that's yeah, another yeah, episode or something. Batteries. No. It'll, be, it'll be one o'clock in the morning and we'll be, we'll be five, six beers deep. Drooling no, that's, da that's dangerous. Talk about batteries. I'll be asleep by then. I, I won't even be I'll listening to you. I'll be like, <laughs> I'll do this all night. Invite me back anytime for any topic, Teddy. <laughs> I will take you up on that. Did we, fin but, did we finish the manufacturing process? <laughs> Is that Frankie? No, that's my alarm going off saying, hey, we're past another 40 minutes. Nice. And we're still recording, so I'm all right with it. This is fun, man. I like this. Right? This is why I do it. Dude, like for, for people that, excuse me, for people that are in the science industry, like after this show, if you know any other people that are in, I'm sure you do, that are in the science-related industry, dude, please forward me their contact. I would love to have them on the show. I just want to, like, keep on interviewing more and more people that are obviously very smart, but also, like, th that, that know that could, like, pretty much help me educate myself on stuff, but also people that may not know what you know, you know? Give and too much credit, <laughs> dude. You're smarter than me. Like, come on. Well, I also don't study electric electric work, but you're a good guy, man. So, cheers to you. Cheers again. Right yes. on. Yes. Clink. Clink to the environment. Yes. Clink. God, this thing is so good. Thank you, Beach House. I think Anyways, I dude, sells them in six packs. This is my second one, so I might. Be three deep. Actually, I'm gonna be about three deep in the thirty seconds. But anyway, um, what's it called? So keep going into the manufacturing. So like it's we're we're past the wafers and silica. You got your window. You got your window. Yep. You got your solar cells. You got yep, your bus right. bars. You got your right. uh, and then you get an aluminum frame around it all. But before that, you get there's a so you got your back sheet, your your wafer cells. They get all soldered together. In a, in, a, in, the, in the bus bar and then uh there's a piece of uh there's a hmm, there's like a silicon gel that goes between the cell and the tempered glass and there's a sheet of tempered glass get, that gets set down over the entire top and it's vacuum sealed and this is where a lot of the poor panel manufacturers screw up 
Dun, dun, dun. They either don't get all the moisture out of the panel, they don't get all the air out of the panel. Something goes wrong in this process, and I've seen more panels burnt up because of poor lamination than oh, anything else. Really? Anything else. There's a it's say there's a little air pocket in that uh in that wafer. Right? Okay. Right. So you've got electrons flying through this thing at the speed of light. That gets very, very hot. If it's just this gel that's supposed to be um, that's that's designed for this temperature, you're not going to have any issue. But if you if it's passing through a pocket of air, that air could have water molecules in it that could turn into steam, that could turn into superheated steam, and basically burn the uh, the connection. It could burn the solar the silica cell. It can it burns the um, it burns the liquid that's not the liquid but the gel that's between the glass and the wafer and it basically oh, it just it, it exacerbates itself the more the bigger the gap the more that can get destroyed the bigger the gap the more they can get destroyed and it, it just destroys itself so it's pretty much like yeah. i'll send man. you those i'll send you those pictures too <laughs> all right <laughs> send me whatever you got man you um, just, you just piece it in Pretty much, just piece it all the way through. It's fine. It's cool. I, I, um, I talk about a destroyed solar cell. I can see it up here. You guys don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> no, definitely not. No. I, I mean, I've seen like a circuit board when it burned, so I'm kind of like... It looks kind of like that. Okay. Kind of like just that. Just black and yeah. disgusting. <laughs> and sometimes sometimes these little these little hot spots can get so hot, they'll actually shatter the, um, the tempered glass. And panels break for no reason. And people don't know what the hell happened. And I look at it and go, yeah, you got a little burn mark right there. Oh, so yeah. essentially it's no bueno. Mm, no, no bueno. No no bueno. bueno. There, there are subpar solar manufacturers. Sharp, fantastic. Can't get them anymore. They, they stopped making solar panels. Kyocera was our number one go-to for a very long time. They only sell panels to uh, – they're, they're a J Japanese manufacturer. They only sell in the island of Japan right now because – very rude, Ted. I'm listening. Don't worry. Very, very rude. <laughs> oh, sound, sound like, hey. Hey. I'm listening though. I did. I unplugged you so I could hear you. All right. Um, what was I? Japanese. So, like, Japanese. you, you. Japanese. The last thing I heard from you was that, um. Kyocera, something like that. Is Kyocera, Kyocera doesn't sell panels in the United States anymore, and it's a damn shame because they were fantastic. They were, uh, they, were they were a wonderful, wonderful, high grade, but like cheaper than cheaper than most high grade panels. Really great. I cannot say a bad thing about Kyocera. They they were super robust. I have never replaced a a burnt out Kyocera. Really? I can say the same exact thing about LG and Panasonic. LG and Panasonic are like this, except this one's a little taller. This is Panasonic, this is LG. <laughs> Essentially, and it, and it comes down. It comes ones. down to the. It comes down to the heat technology. I said I was talking about before. That's what that's what Panasonic's got over LG. LG's got a three fifty five watt panel right now. Panasonic's got a three forty. That three forty is going to produce more in a year than that three fifty five. Go figure. It's the heat. It's well, then heat shout out to Panasonic, shout out to LG, and shout out to, what was that other one? The, Kyocera, there you go. I keep wanting to say Sam Sarah, because I, anyway, it's another company that is totally not about solar, I don't think. No, they are, but anyway. No, but we, uh, we only install premium solar panels. <laughs> That's it. We don't, we don't play around with uh, some of the lesser models. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock anybody on air. No, no, like no, you you guys are really good about like you know working with the public about you know keeping their electric bill down. We, inst we install a premium solar panel. That's why we're premier. Uh, that's why we're elite installers for Panasonic. They they made us they made us go through a test. They came out and inspected our systems. It's a, uh, it's, it's not a joke. It's not just a badge that that's handed out. Like I said, we're the, oh, only, you we're the only one in New Jersey with the elite staller badge. Well, Pat, you're so on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Hurt my arm. Oh. <laughs> sprain my, sprain my elbow, patting myself on the back. 
Oh, I know I'm all right. I'm good. Whatever. <laughs> That's awesome, though. All right, so then let's keep on. Got some fun facts here. All right, well, hold off on the fun facts. I want you to <laughs> save those for after. <laughs> keep on going into like the whole manufacturing part. So like we've gone that's into it, that's the basically, that's basically the whole manufacturing bit. Oh, but um, okay. but that that also lends itself to uh, the problem with um, the problem with recycling these things. The the wafer the wafer cells can't just be burnt down and turned into new wafer cells because they're doped with um, what are they phosphorus? Phosphorus, yeah. yes. They're hey. doped with phosphorus and boron. Two very hazardous chemicals that if you send into the atmosphere, it's no bueno. Like you said before, no bueno. But um yeah. Yeah, so you figure out how to you figure out how to smelt these things down without getting any chemicals into the atmosphere, trap that phosphorus, trap that boron, trap those heavy metals that are uh, that are inside the solder joints between the between the solar cells, and you've uh, you've just made yourself a million dollars times couple a lot. A couple thousand it's a billion dollar industry man I'm telling you right. uh, you heard it here first figure out how to recycle solar cells i'd do it but i'm too goddamn busy putting solar systems up <laughs> hey you put them up i'll work on a plan to recycle them we'll be good but you gotta got a little collaboration quick. deal you gotta work on it quick because the first generate the first uh, generation of solar cells the first modern generation of solar cells is uh, coming to its life's end, and uh, people are. How long do I have? Probably five years. All right, cool. I have five, two years five, to come up couple, with something. A couple of years, yeah. And the landfills are going to be full of boron, oh, God. And phosphorus, and heavy metals. They're already full of that stuff. But I was say the uh, land. There's countless landfills nationwide already. We don't need any more shit in them. That's why we need to work on a waste shit. Figure it out, Ted. Figure it out, man. Hey, <laughs> I I almost would rather someone else. I mean, I'll definitely work on it, but I'd rather someone else that's more even more qualified than me, like an actual engineer to maybe partner up with me and do it. I'm not, I don't have the engineering qualifications for that. I like doing the podcasting part to bring awareness to it. You're the PR guy. Exactly. That's pretty much what I am. That's what I'm working toward. The PR guy of the environment and saying, hey, here's the business opportunity you should get into. Go run with it and give me a little percentage of the, the profits. Absolutely. Yeah, you heard it here. I, I'm only asking for a measly 2%. That's it. Okay. I'm all right with 2%. Take the rest of it. I just want 2%. Dude, 2% is still a lot of money. Holy crap. Two percent of a billion dollars? A That's a money. pretty penny. <laughs> That's an odd... dollars, I'm alright with that. Oy. I'm a, I'm a I'm a simple man. I just want to race my ensign and uh, drink and work. Have a, have a beer every now and then. Mark a lot. That sounds like a very awesome life. Pay for my pay for my kids' college somehow. Somehow. God damn it, Bernie. <laughs> Bernie, get the office, man. No. Um, Too late. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a whole other topic for yeah, another time. Yeah, let's not time. get into that. Let's not no. get into that right now. Well, if anything, I would go to <clears throat> another person I know that specializes, bleh, a little bit, specializes in government study. Is this how most of your interviews end? <laughs> no. They end however I have them in, man. But, um, all right, so then we we went to the pros and cons. We went to the manufacturing. What is there to go into? Well, I mean, we went into, Fun like, facts. the... Yes, there you go. Fun <laughs> facts. I somehow, like, direct the conversation, but, like, I, it's a, you know, give and take, you know? All right, fun facts time. Let's do it. Fun I facts. hope I'm not being loud to my housemates. Anyway, fun facts go. number one. Dun, dun. Panasonic's Panasonic Electric's first product came out in 1918. 
You want to guess what it uh, was? Uh, some kind of small gadget that could, no, not small, but big enough gadget that you could kind of make mobile. It was a light bulb socket that you could put two light bulbs into. Woo! 1918. I mean, Tell that me was a light. big deal. I feel Tell like that was a big light. deal, right? Yeah. Do you know what their second product was? What was it? A light bulb socket with a plug in the side. <laughs> hey! <laughs> look where they are today. They're making they're making 340 watt panels, man. They're an industry leader. It's insane. Fun keep fact. going, Panasonic. Keep going. Fun fact number two. The first known photo photoelectric cell was made in 1883 by, wow. a, man named Char by a man named Charles Fitz. Fritz. It Charles was Fritz. Charles Fritz. It was made from a super thin <laughs> piece of gold, and it produced less than a half or uh, less than one percent efficiency. Now, let me explain efficiency. <clears throat> it's uh, if 100 percent efficiency is taking in 100% of the sun's energy for a given space. Let's take my little square again. And if there was sun coming through there, if I could trap all 100% of that energy and turn it into electric, that would be 100% efficient. That is way in the future. To put yeah. this guy in perspective, he could get about 0.8% efficiency. We are only at 20% efficiency. 20 Right now? Solar. Right now. The world like the, currently in 2020. Currently. The best solar panel you can buy, not testing right now. The best solar panel you can buy is a is about sorry. Is about twenty percent efficient. Damn. Well, I that's mean at, that's at one thousand watts per square meter irradiance. That's all out sunshine. You're only getting twenty percent of what that sun's of that potential sun energy. I now, right. now in the in the fifties, Bell Labs. Well, this is fun fact number three. <laughs> Bell Just keep Labs, on going with the fun facts, man. Bell Labs was uh, making solar panels for the space program, putting them on satellites, putting them on spaceships, spaceships right. that would eventually go into uh, go into space. The summer of '69. And they were only about 6% efficient. So from 1918 to the 1950s, they, uh, they only managed to ramp it up about 5%. 5 um, Albert Einstein actually won a Nobel Prize for his, um, for his work in uh, photovoltaic theory. That's, awesome. that's, a, that's, a, that's, a bar, that's a bar trivia fact right there. <laughs> yeah, no one would probably get. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Nikolai Tesla had a hand in uh, in photovoltaics at one point, and then he realized oh, yeah. then he realized it wasn't efficient enough, and he couldn't make any money on it, so he, he went elsewhere. Yeah, but, um, most likely. I'm actually surprised Edison didn't dive in. I didn't see his name on the list. Right? Mm. But uh, mm. sorry, man. That's all the fun facts I got for you. <laughs> I only had three. <laughs> it's all right, man. I love it. I love it. Wait, so like, just going back to efficiency really quick. So, what do you think, like, based on your experience and everything, and like, okay, so like, we're projecting, um, say, t five, 10 years in the future. Well, actually, at the rate of technology, five years in the future. Five years in the future, I think we might be at 40%. 40? 40%. It's a tough nut to crack. I think we're limited by the elements we're working with. I think we need to find, I, we need to pick a different element or discover or create a new element. I know there's not many elements to discover anymore because the periodic table's full. Uh, there's no well, our to... Our periodic table is just about full. But however... I'll tell you what. Cold Fusion. Remember that movie from the from the nineties about uh about the Soviets inventing cold fusion? The guy who creates cold I heard fusion of it. is gonna is gonna eliminate all green energy because there's gonna be no need for it. You're gonna have cold fusion plants. It's it's basically fusion, like the sun's energy, without the heat 
and the risk of a disaster like Chernobyl. It's cold. It, it happens at a much lesser temperature. Okay. And, and the radiation, and the radiation is uh, much more controllable. I think. I think I'm talking out of my ass right now. <laughs> but I don't think solar is going to save. Oh, the, I don't think solar and wind and geothermal are going to save the planet. We need we need thinkers. We need people who are going to come up with the next best thing. Uh, the future is going to decide. Um, that's kind of redundant. The future is going to decide the future of our planet. We don't have the answer right now, or else we would have done it already, or tried to do it. Solar is solar, wind, geothermal, um, these massive solar plants for uh, for superheating superheating elements. They are they are a great holdover until the next best thing comes along. But until then, you might as well install solar system and make a couple bucks. I'm talking to you, the homeowner, not me. <laughs> You're already doing that, so definitely not you. Talking to the homeowner, you make. I know. Double, I know. double your money in five years. Uh, double your money in ten years. <laughs> it's a solid investment for your home, especially especially as the future comes along. People are going to be looking for homes that already have solar installed on them, and they don't have to pay a premium price for that installed solar system because the previous owner uh, got it got it paid for already. <laughs> I mean. I don't know about you, but I would like to kind of build off of someone else's work that's already, you know, there, just kind of extend it. I didn't even get to the best part. Panasonic's got a 25-year warranty on their panels. Woo! These panels are guaranteed. Oh, wait, there's years. more. <laughs> Whoa, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact number oh, four. <laughs> My mic keeps on freaking falling down. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, this is great. All right, keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no, because you were like, but wait, Panasonic has wh whatever you just said. I, I, a twenty, a twenty-five year production warranty. Oh, okay. Uh, it's panels have panels have a degradation. There's not, there's no two ways about it. The longer you have own a panel, the less, the less it's going to produce. But Panasonic has the best uh, industry leading panel production warranty right now it's uh right. they guarantee they guarantee it will be producing at least minimum of 85 percent of its uh production in 25 years which is absolutely phenomenal absolutely yeah. phenomenal that we've installed we've installed some lesser solar panels that will be at about 50 percent of their actual production in 10 years so 25 years later you're putting out 85 percent of what you were now, I'm not going to be putting out 85% of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'll be able to lift 15% of what I'm doing now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also got your system, what, last year or two years ago? I got my system. So it was pretty much right when, right when I started at uh, NJ Slow, which was about two, three years ago, right? The the thing on the thing on Facebook just popped up because I took a bunch of pictures that day and I think it's okay. I think it was three years ago. Yeah, that sounds about right. Cause I, I still remember working there and then you were like, "Hey, I just installed my own system." So I three that's... years, not one electric bill. Mm. Three years. Oh, really? No oh, not, not, a, <laughs> not a single electric bill. Maybe in the summertime when the AC is going all out, I'll get like a twenty dollar electric bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh darn, twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Bro. When this whole thing goes out, I would love for <laughs> NJ Solar to be a sponsor of my podcast. Oh my god. That'd be awesome. I'll make it happen, man. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. But this um so this is a lot of fun. <laughs> right? This is why I do podcasts. This is like Dude, I'm having a blast right now, and I have to wake up in about four hours. Yeah, I have to be at work at 4 a.m. 4 a.m.? Uh, yeah. I work at Porky, where my dad works, remember? I know where you work. Your dad doesn't go to work at 4 a.m. What are you well, doing? Well, he's a salesman. I lump all the crap that he sells. Why aren't you selling? <laughs> That's a really good question. 
senior. Help him out, man. Right? Go, <laughs> <laughs> <No>, Dad. <laughs> um, shit, man. So, yeah. uh, I am on Saturday. That's like Dawn Patrol stuff. It literally is. But you know what? I'm hoping to get out at 9 because we've been slow lately. So it's almost like I worked before the day even started. That's so cool. I'm okay. I'm alright with it. You're yeah. home by lunch. You're home by lunchtime. That's nice. Not even. I'm home by like ten o'clock. Perfect. Just in time for breakfast. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, you only work like, go, you only work a five hour shift. Yeah, it's not That's that big it. of a deal. Yeah. Everybody. Well, when we're actually well, when we're actually really busy, I'll work till about noon. But okay. I'm still okay with it. Does still making money. Have, does, does Porky's have solar? Me and Bill were talking about this today. Uh, Do they have I, a solar system? We. I want to say no, but I honestly have no idea. That's a question for my dad. I'm going to talk to your dad about that because yeah, cause, for sure. Because the accelerated the accelerated that, uh, depreciation is a uh, is a huge seller for the uh, for the owners of those buildings. I mean, and if, I he, would, and if he hasn't, if he has not gone solar yet, he absolutely has to. He has to. He or the company. The company. The owner. Whoever owns yeah. that building has to Whoa. go solar. The guy, the guy across the street went went solar. Um, we actually we designed that job to the T and then it was stolen from us from another company. They took the plans and went to another company. It was the biggest cluster F that that one of the biggest cluster Fs that uh <laughs> Here, I'll I'll say it for you, motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. I'll say because it it's my show, but you know. Don't put that right in. You can put it in there. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's fine. I'm sure anyone, like, come on. It's fine. Um, all right, so really quickly, though, um, just backing up to efficiency really quick. Anyone that, like, anyone that's working on enhancing solar production, just look at, well, no, don't actually look at Iceland because they're actually fully ge geothermal. However, I've been actually watching. They're, um, they're a volcanic island. That's why they're exactly. Geothermal. Yes. They got those hot springs and all that cool stuff. I gotta go to Iceland, man. <laughs> I want to make a trip to Iceland, dude. Like, I okay. Watch. I'm gonna shout this. Uh, shout this. Uh, documentary <laughs> docu series out. Down to Earth with Zac Efron. He was part of High School Musical and everything, but he's actually a huge environmentalist. He's really. And, yeah, him and um and uh Darren um Darren Olin I think his name is Darren Olin something something like that. They literally travel all around the world and <clears throat> visit other places on how they work their sustainability methods, whether it's renewable energy, eating habits, pretty much connecting social, economic, and environmental pillars all together. That's, and they're that's awesome. way farther ahead than us, because yeah. USA has to get on their shit. But yeah. we are heading yeah. there. We got a lot of uh, lot well, of with, we got a lot of people with their heads in the sand right now, and it's um, it's kind yes. of disheartening. It is. It's uh, it's pretty discouraging, but it leaves opportunity for other young guys such as ourselves to go into the sustainability field and slash en engineering field to make shit happen. Make shit happen. Put that yeah. on a bumper sticker. <laughs> make print, make a uh, recycle the wrist place inside of it. <laughs> but um, no, I'm only saying that just because like Iceland's a hundred percent renewable energy just from geothermal. And then mm -hmm. Netherlands I believe it's Netherlands and surrounding countries are like pretty much seventy five to yeah yeah exactly they're seventy five to almost a hundred percent renewable just from their their surroundings pretty we are getting awesome. our shit they got a pretty cool sailing community up there too yeah they do <laughs> some of the best sailors in the world are are uh, from sweet uh, from Finland and Norway <laughs> yeah they are. The freaking rock stars, bro. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's really all I wanted to say about efficiency. Just you know, we we gotta we gotta research and and 
steal some ideas from Europe because they're like way ahead of the game than us. Yep. So that, that that's all I really got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies, relax, people. I don't have it. Don't worry. <laughs> no, dude. I, I ha I cannot. I shit you not. I've literally coughed like once or twice at work, and everyone's like, "I'm like, I literally sipped a drink and it went down the wrong pipe. Chill." What's wrong pipe? Don't worry about it. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, man. Pretty much. Shit. <laughs> All right, man. Well, it's like 20 at night, and uh, if you want to go to bed, you go to bed. Don't mind. Right. Yeah, I, I, no, I don't really know what else to talk about. So I think I think we're uh, I think we're good. We need a new topic, but you need to get some sleep and go to work tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, definitely um, have me back. This been this was a this was a right. Awesome it's fun, right? Show. It's so fun, dude. We get to drink beer, especially local beer, and freaking BS about science and solar. Can't get much better than that. Where's uh, Kona Brewing Company from? Probably Hawaii. Something like Kona that. is Hawaiian. Yeah. Because I've had that beer plenty of times and it's really good. Shout out to Kona Brewing. Not local. No, it's definitely not, but it's but very good. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah how, many so, beers, how many beers have you endorsed? <laughs> um, I think two. That's it. Yeah, no, not, 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 how, not how many beers have you endorsed tonight. I mean, how many beers have you endorsed during your pod, your life of podcasting? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, there's Last Wave Brewery that I've had my actual show at. Uh, Beach House. Um, when this shit's over, we got to do an in-person show. Oh, absolutely. Whenever yeah. that actually happens. Guys, wear your mask and get this thing be over. Safe. With. Yeah, please. Over with. Seriously. Be done. Wear your masks. Social distance. Not get that out. hard. Do it. Anybody got time for this? Just do it. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get like complaints tomorrow. I'll be like, dude, you were like really loud. <laughs> but um, all right. So last night brewery, beach house. I think I've done. No, uh, I've done Carib, which is actually a uh, British Virgin Island beer, because I've done I've done my show in the Virgin Islands. Uh, you did a show I, in the Virgin Islands? Yeah, go on go on my my YouTube channel. It's me and I, Aaron. I'm interviewing at Aaron Murphy. No way about biofuel. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, it, it was during the the BVI trip I missed. Yeah. <laughs> It was when we were going from, uh, uh, I want to say Norman Island to Anagata, which was like a good, like, I don't know, two, three hour boat ride. We were literally just on a reach. Just, and my dad was like, hey, you want to do a show, show now? And I'm like, why not? Dude, we were. We'll, we'll, we'll have a show at Beach Your Jaw Club. We'll have, uh, we'll have a show. Let's do it. Uh, ooh, we should do a wine show. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a winery right down the street from my house. What? Which one? I don't know. Bacchus or something like that. Oh, I thought you were going to say Laredo. I'm like, that's more south than you. We'll, we'll, we'll have a wine show. Yes. <laughs> the, well, the drink, it's big, so you can drink whatever. Drink and whatever talk about want. science. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I think I've... I may be done like a, a good handful. I'm gonna say a handful because I don't remember all of them, but yeah. One I'm, hand. Uh, one yes. hand. Yes. Only five of these. I, I know. I've because I, I you need to yeah. you need to expand your palate. You need to be like I've <laughs> No, I'm well, I've shout out Sam Adams once, which is not really local. I've also done I've also shout out I think uh I want to say Corona beer. It's ironic, but that was like two years ago. And then um, I probably shouted out a couple others. You shouted out Corona. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm having a Corona beer, but I'm not sponsored by this at all. I just like the beer. 
that would be very ironic if I'm like, hey, this show is sponsored by Corona right now. Well, this virtual uh, show is sponsored by Corona. <laughs> exactly. But not I have no sponsors. I just like to support local and good causes. So that that's just me. That's just how I roll, man. If anyone wants to, you know, throw me a legit sponsorship, have at it, man. As long as you're science related or a good local brewing company, I'm all for it. Gotta get out of that bedroom, man. Gotta Are you hanging out of my bedroom? You gotta get out of there. Close those Eventually. doors, man. I want to meet at a bar. Well, <laughs> yes, that will happen. Close those, close those drawers. Pick up, pick up that shit on the floor. <laughs> Use the force. All right, man. Well, this was an awesome show, man. Thank you for being on it. Ed, thanks shout, for having me in. Shout out to really quick again. Um, guys, go to mybrittle.com. Get your favorite um, line of peanut brittle product at checkout. Enter in uh, drink sust. That is D R I N K S U S T, all lower caps, all one word. Get $3 off your first purchase and support a local local business because one, it doesn't stick. And believe it or not, it is actually vegan. Sorry, my webcam is down again or up. But yeah, so doesn't stick. Literally does not stick. Had very a lot of testimonials on this. Um, it's delicious, crispy, nice, and it's actually vegan. So try it out. You'll be, you'll honestly be surprised. I was surprised. So, uh, yeah, support my friend Casey, go do it. And, uh, yeah, go, so <laughs> go support MJ Solar Power, get your own solar system. There you go. Represent. <laughs> go support NJ Solar, get a quote from them. NJSolarPower.com. 1-800-SOLAR-ME. Oh, no, not 1-800. 1-877-SOLAR-ME. <laughs> but just go to njsolarpower.com. Get a free quote today. <laughs> Get in touch with me. I'll forward you to... I'll, I'll, put your, I'll put your email there. I'll put Mike's email there. Or uh, Bill Hoey's, whoever. Whoever you... Yeah, sales. I'll put uh, Mike Stalba's... Uh, contact him for the get, get him some business um but yeah divest into uh divest into oil and gas invest into renewable energy let's be the salute the solution not the pollution everyone let's go love it ted all right man thanks for having me bud i'll talk Dude, to you soon. always a pleasure man always it was good seeing you man as soon as this thing's right, over we're doing a live show Oh, absolutely. I would love that. I also love actually in person interviews anyway. So Yeah. But this is cool too. For... A little impersonal, but I've had I've had a lot of practice with with like um oh all my um all of my uh my continuing education classes have been online. So yeah, everything's like, going online. I, I usually have to drive to like Cherry Hill or uh or uh Linden, New Jersey or uh Piscataway. I do all that shit from my office now. It's awesome. <laughs> this ghetto is a good hike. Yeah, I know. From you, you especially. Know I got I got my last class to to get my uh, get my renewable education credits, uh, get my uh, continuing education credits for uh, for my license renewal is a couple weeks, and then that's it. Dude, you're gonna kill it, bro. What? I, it sounded like a test on saying you're gonna kill it. I'm I just, sorry, I'm like I kind of buzzed right now. I sit there in a Zoom classroom and go. <laughs> yeah, we we learn all about all about cool products coming up, dude. The 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 2021 code is um is coming out soon. We just did it. We just did a um uh, a 10 hour class on it, and the coolest part of the whole code update is um, in 2021, there's provisions in there for a backwards running car charger. So if you have an electric car, you'll be able to, in a power outage, you'll be able to plug your car in and power your house from your car. 
Wait, what? <laughs> game changer. <laughs> okay, so instead of plugging it to the sun, you plug it to your car. What? I'm a, I'm a few uh, heavy beers deep, so let me try. Let me try to let me try to get this out. All right, you have a regular car charger. Okay. You're gonna take that out. You're gonna unplug it, and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> okay. And then you're gonna put in one of these smart car chargers. They don't exist yet, but they will because it's in the code and the industry follows the code. So the code has the code has provisions in there for car chargers to run backwards. So instead of having a battery bank in your house to power your house when the power's out, if you know a storm is coming, like a Sandy or a or a Gabriel or some sort of some some you know, Harvey or something, tropical yeah. depression, you know there's gonna be issues with power. Well yeah. You charge a car up 12 hours before it hits. Our Doppler radars are phenomenal. We know what's coming. Oh, yeah. 48, for sure. hours, 48 hours before it gets there. You charge a car up. Power goes out in the middle of the night. You've got on your phone, you get an alert. All right, switch to backup power. Your, uh, your fridge is running. Your air conditioner, eh, probably not your air conditioner. That's pretty high load. You don't want to waste your car battery on that. But if it's winter, it's cold, like Sandy. You remember it snowed like three days later. You want your heater in your house. You want that motor to run. So that motor's running. Your refrigerator's running. Your cable's running, as long as the power lines aren't down. So you've got TV. You can find out the news. You can find out what's going on. You can watch the weather. Get your Wi-Fi going. All off your car. How cool is that, man? That's pretty swanky. Go get a... Go get an electric car. <laughs> yeah, when I could afford one. <laughs> model three, model threes are pretty cheap. Actually, like, model threes are pretty cheap. They're like what, thirty five k? Thirty five, I think. Yeah. Thirty five. Well, con else. considering the model X is like a hundred and eight, maybe not. Maybe not hundred. <laughs> it's like it's up there. It's like eighty thousand dollars. But all right, Google it. What's a model eight? <laughs> oh, you can see my my screen. screen. <laughs> model X. The model uh, Model X. <laughs> well, there's Model X, Model Y. Uh, What's the Model Y? It's like the regular car. The the Model X is an SUV, I believe, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, the, no. model, the model. Yeah, it's an SUV. Yeah, the Model S is the is the sedan. The Model X is the. Uh, oh, go ahead, right in front of my face. Uh, 2020 Tesla Model X SRP ranges from $84,990 to $104,990. I don't think ludicrous speed is worth that much money. <laughs> we do, we do have a, we installed a, um, we installed a 15K job, a 15K solar system on a, on a gentleman's house. He also purchased a 20K backup uh, Kohler generator, which we also install. Kohler, shout out to Kohler. Um, Kohler, best generator money can buy. Um, he ins he has a uh, he has a Tesla Model X. He wouldn't tell me how much it was, but when he got it, he was so excited. I was up at his last house, which he also bought solar from us. I was up at his last house, and he uh, he showed me a cool trick his car could do. Um, he opened up his phone, he hit a button, his car told the garage door to open, his car backed out of the garage door and opened the driver door for him. What? That's what $109,000 will get you. <laughs> Money well spent, I guess. Oh. That's, a, that's just utter convenience. That's literally selling convenience at a good price. He doesn't, e he doesn't even need to turn the car like on he's got it programmed all he has to do is walk up to the driver's side door the driver door will open and the car will like pre-turn itself on so all he has to do is sit in and go <laughs> he's, got the, he's got the key fob or I don't, i'm not sure if it's a key fob or if it's programmed to his phone but if it's his phone or key fob and he just walks up to it it'll it'll do all that 
Toby doesn't walk up to it and it's like next to like a pillar, the door opens into the pillar. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> That would suck so much. <laughs> um, it's a cool car, though. That it's just really happened, cool. yeah. That just happened. <laughs> but uh, the Model Y is the more cheaper one. It's actually 20, a 2020 model. Uh, 2020, 2020 Tesla Model Y is 40000 to $60,990. What's the difference between that and the Model 3? Oh, oh snap, bro! Chill your roll. Oh, wow, that's a huge difference. Um, about like roughly five k. So model three is thirty nine thousand nine hundred ninety to uh, fifty six thousand. Oh, so, so a model. So it's y. pretty much either a model Y is like forty to sixty k, but a, a model, model Y is like the is the model three of the SUV version. It's an SUV, but it's yeah, the cheaper so. version of the model X. The model three is the cheaper version of the model S. Is that correct? Yeah. I... Nailed Sounds it. about right, yeah. You got it. You got it. No, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, you're right. Model S and the model three are similar. Just the model S is a lot more expensive than the model three. Yeah, because it does like a hundred so miles an hour, and it'll smoke a Ferrari. <laughs> well, yeah, the the Model S, like the this year's model, zero to sixty in two point four. It says the range, which is weird, but two point four to three point seven seconds. That's insane. And that thing is quiet too, which is in, more insane. Like, I've seen a video of. A Tesla drag racing, just a regular like American Muscle. Yeah, and it was quiet. Gaps it. It was almost like whoosh. it was like new. Because well, there's, no, there's no gears. It's all torque. No. There's nothing. Well, it's it's also. I mean, I've I've, re I've I'm, watched. I think, a, I think they have individual motors per tire as well. Uh yes, they have. So it's four, four small drive. motors, but it's like. A regular combustion engine, and I'm sure you know this. A regular oh, combustion okay. engine. Okay, well, I've I've watched a couple video. Okay, so I've wa I've researched a couple videos on the difference between a combustion engine and an electric engine, and pretty much what it is, it's the the essential like couple thing. The couple differences is that one a lot a lot fewer moving parts than an electric car. Why are you laughing at me? A couple, a couple differences is they're completely different. Well, obviously. <laughs> I'm saying it like the initial parts. Yes, they're completely different in material and working. They could, they could not be more different. <laughs> I know that. That's what I'm trying to say. then they saying. both go like this. <laughs> You're so ruining my thunder right now. I hate you. <laughs> I love you, man. I, I know you do. <laughs> we gotta go serve, but anyway. Um no well, from the couple videos that I watched, there's like say fifteen moving parts in an electric motor compared to like a hundred or a hundred and twenty moving parts in a combustion engine. Mm -hmm. So one, it's less moving parts, and two, the carbon footprint for an electric motor is a lot it's it's reduced like tenfold. Yeah, absolutely. Don't quote me on the number, but I'm just. I am gonna, I am to say, gonna play. I am gonna play devil's advocate real real quick here. Do it quick, because I am gonna go to bed in like five minutes. <laughs> but yeah. say, you, say you have a you have an electric vehicle, you're charging it full charge, sixty amps. Mac, the, the 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 most you should charge an electrical vehicle. Is 60. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that, but now I know. That's if you buy like a, a, a high end charger. Now, okay. your neighbor has an electric car. His neighbor has an electric car. His neighbor has an electric car. Full neighborhood, full of electric cars. Get home okay. and work at five o'clock, start charging your car. That's 60 amps per household. 
that's a lot of amps for, for as many um, as many electric cars so like, say in a neighborhood there's like i don't know 50 50 houses 50 houses just that's, to make an even number that's 50 electric cars at 60 amps a piece that's a it's whole like mess. that's a whole mess of electric as it is right now the utility company counts on you using no more than an average of 30 of 13 amps 300 amps no 13 oh. 13 what? one three one three amps per phase on your electric service that's the average amount of power that you will use in an hour now you throw an electric car on top of that in a in a community of commuter business type people who are all going to get home at the same time we're all going to charge their cars at the same time they're all going to leave for work at the same time that is a massive massive drain on the utility so it all stems back to strange too. it all stems back to the utility that burrito is cold now bro <laughs> so fucking good. <laughs> it all stems back to the utility we need to invest in our utility companies we need to invest in our infrastructure and and, and we need to upgrade this stuff we're working we're trying to we're trying to add brand new brand new wheels to, to an antiquated piece of machinery. You've got to fix it first. You've got to fix it before you can move forward. Right. Dude, go to bed. <laughs> we'll talk again yeah. very, very soon. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Everyone, go, go, uh, go check out NJ Solar. Go check out My Brittle. Go check out Beach House Brewery. Have a good night. <laughs> Later, Teddy. Good night, guys. Good night, man. Now, you asked me about uh, what sustainability means to me. Um, personally, sustainability um, is basically just the, the generic answer that everybody gives. You got to reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, unfortunately, everything that we do as human beings, uh, not that none of it is sustainable. Um, everything from our, 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 uh, our agricultural habits to our meat growing and harvesting techniques to even just our government, um, none of it is sustainable. It's all super wasteful. Um, and unless we have a, uh, a change in the way we perceive the world, um, I don't see anything changing right now. It's a pretty, pretty uh, pessimistic outlook, but it's, it's, it's realist. Um, it's a realistic outlook. <laughs> uh, the, only folks that, uh, the only folks that are really sustainable in my book are the um are the aborigines and uh and um really native people of this planet who uh who still live in small villages on river banks in the deep jungle and they um they fish the rivers they source food from the local they grow and source food from the local uh local vegetation and jungle and um we could all take a we could all take a cue from them but there's just too many of us it's, it's it's not possible to feed people this many people from the fish from the river and the and the the, the food from the forest uh so you need your gmos to to stop uh, uh crop degradation save as many crops as possible fully organic food is super expensive the the lower classes of people can't afford it um and uh, I'm actually at a, at a at a farm right now. Uh, guy's got solar, obviously, <laughs> and he's got chickens. He's got all sorts of all sorts of cool stuff. He's got a greenhouse in the back with a couple fans, but none of it's sustainable. The solar system is outdated. Um, it needs to be replaced uh, within the next ten years, and it, it's going to cost thousands and thousands tens of thousands of dollars to replace his solar system and he, he doesn't have that kind of money not a lot of people do um so we need to have a uh we need to have a real meeting of the minds uh so to speak and um try to come up with a better system because this one's not sustainable but in the meantime on a lighter note as you're walking down the street and you see a piece of garbage if it's not covered in feces or other nastiness pick it up throw it away 
get it off the street so it doesn't blow into the water or blow into the sewer grate, which eventually goes into the water. And, um, I don't know, try to do your part. Every action you make has uh, consequences, whether they be good or bad. So, be well. Hello everyone, thank you for watching The Drink Sustainability. Warning, as you watch the show, be sure to clink at your own risk. Drinks may not appear the way that they seem.